Colleen McCrory and I was born in a large mining family in New Denver. I was born in 1950 and I'm one of nine children. My father was a prospector who came here in, the, I guess, 1947 after the war. And um, I've grown up all of my life in New Denver and Silverton. When I was a little girl, there were still what I'd call remnants of the old timers around. And my mother used to um, love looking after people. So anyone that didn't have a home or a place for Christmas dinner, anyone to look after them, all the bachelors used to hang out at our house. So we would end up having sometimes 40 or 50 people for Christmas or Thanksgiving dinners. And my mother really made an effort to feed people who didn't have anyone to cook for them, which meant a lot of the old mining prospectors who were old bachelors left from the mining era. And uh, so I had the incredible experience of hearing all these wonderful stories of what their lives were. And it was, I sort of feel like I've lived on a cusp um, of what this life is. Growing up here in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s in the Slocan Valley with all the hip movement and Americans and through the uh, Japanese era, the Dukabor era. But the beginnings of my experiences were with the old prospectors and the old miners who used to all hang out at our house. These bachelors lived totally on their own in these remote cabins and as I got older and I go out to these places where they lived, I envied their lifestyle. They basically would take their grub into the back hills and have their little cabin and work for probably long days. Um, but they also had all of this incredible time on their own without all the complications that we now have of our busy lives. When I look back at the large mines that were in Sandon and the incredible wealth that came out of this valley, um, I think that a few people got very, very rich. I think for the most part, the miners had very hard lives. Really, the people that took the wealth out of here didn't leave very much for the people that were left behind. You know, a family of nine children, a poor mining family, we grew up on deer meat and macaroni. We didn't have very much um, at the, in the 50s. People were poor in this valley. One of my most favorite characters lived at Three Forks, and his name, he was a bootlegger called John Henry. But John Henry used to love to tell us stories. Um, he used to be a guard at the school in the, when the Sons of Freedom children were there. And so we used to go over in the dark across the road and he would tell us the stories of the Banishee walking on the trestle at Three Forks. And that was sort of a highlight to, if we wanted to be really afraid, we'd go and hear this story. I remember Turk Avison from Silverton telling me a story once when he was a little boy and all the different levels of mines on Sandon that they knew how to go through from the Sandon side as children and come out at a mining on the Silverton side. And you know, I actually believe that story today. I believe those guys knew how to get, go all those, through those stopes and up all those ladders and come out on the standard side, which is on the Silverton side.